Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to my May book haul. All the books that I bought in May and I bought quite some so we better get started right away. Um, the first two I'm only gonna mention, you know, to be not coherent but complete. I'm a completist. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I talked about both books in my uh, video two days ago in the Friday Reads because I have already read them, uh, but I still bought them in May. And the first one is this, uh, My First and Only Love uh, by uh, Sahar Khalife, translated from the Arabic by Aida Bamiya. Um, this is a Palestinian novel. Khalife is a obviously a Palestinian author, um, born in 1942, and I buddy read this uh, with uh, Joe Smith. And if you're interested and you have missed it, I talked about this book, like I said, in my Friday Reads two days ago. And the book was published, by the way, in the original 2010 and in the English translation uh, earlier this year. And the second one that I only want to mention very briefly um, is this one, Susan Orlean, The Orchid Thief, first published in 1998, about an orchid thief, obviously, but also about the history of orchids and where they come from and why people are obsessed with them. Um, and uh, Susan Orlean is a, a, a journalist, long-form essay journalist, writer, and the same as I uh, with the previous book for this one. If you're interested in more, uh, please check out My Friday Reads because I already finished it and I liked it very much. The next book I bought uh, is one of those books, the Chance Encounter books. That that is so wonderful if it happens. And that is this one, uh, memoir essays. I would say uh, Alicia Elliot, uh, a mind spread out on the ground. First published in 2019. And a chance encounter because I was browsing script and I came across this book. Um, Alicia Elliott uh, is a First Nations author uh, born in the US but living in Canada. Um, uh, and when I saw the description about depression, but also about how, how so it's a memoir ish book, but more in essay form um, about Alicia Elliott's struggle with depression, but also with um, uh, the many, many injustices that First Nations people encounter, whether it's in Canada or somewhere else. Um, and I started reading it on script and I loved it a lot. So I bought my own copy and I haven't picked it up yet um, because I want to start again in, in this copy and mark things, uh, which I will do probably this weekend. But uh, yeah, I, I love it when that happens, you know, these chance encounters and you find a book that is you really, really love and have never heard of. Alicia Elliott, by the way, it has also quite a, 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 a big uh, social media presence, so you can check her out on um, uh, Twitter. Um, she is in your face in a way that I personally really love. <laughs> she is not sugarcoating anything. So, yeah. And this book uh, about her life uh, as, as an indigenous woman and her depression, uh, the first third that I read was really, really good and fascinating and intelligently written. And the next book I bought in May is also nonfiction, and you might have seen that already on my channel. That is Paulina Bren's book about the Barbizon, uh, the New York hotel that set women free. Um, and you could have seen this if you follow my channel because I uh, featured this book in one of my uh, new releases video. I think it was released in March. Uh, Paulina Bren is an historian. She works at Vazar College, International Studies, Women's Studies. And this book is about the famous hotel in New York, which was built in the late 1920s, 1927, um, uh, exclusively to uh, for women, for female guests. Um, and there are a lot of famous people, uh, um, Sylvia Plath to be one of them, who lived in that hotel when they uh, moved to New York in order to make it there. So mainly people in women who worked in the arts, uh, whether it's writers or artists or working um, in related uh, fields like fashion. I think it's fascinating, uh, this idea of this hotel and how it helped women uh, in the 1920s and 30s uh, to make 
their mark to make a career. Um, so after I featured it, of course, I also had to buy it. And now I will have to read it. And the next book, um, I can't even show you yet uh, because it hasn't arrived. I th hopefully I can pick it up uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, but I, I so wanted to include this book in this book haul. So I'm just going to put a picture up here. And that is Jessica J. Lee's memoir, Two Trees Make a Forest, which was published last year. Uh, Jessica J. Lee is an environmental historian, uh, Canadian Taiwanese British um, uh, writer. She lives in London at the moment, and this book is about her uh, exploration of her the roots of her family, uh, tracing the family history uh, from China to the to, to Taiwan and then to Canada, Canada, but also of course exploring uh, nature. And Taiwan in particular, what it means to be an island. Um, and I thought this, uh, when I came across this book, uh, I thought this is a perfect uh, book for Springathon for the first prompt, which is home migration. And like I said, Springathon ended. I don't care. I will just extend it. I, I took my cue from Doris from all the books who extends the Springathon through the whole month, a month of May. And I will probably do the same because I still have a couple of books to read. But anyway, so this one uh, I will pick up, I hope, soon, and then I can read it. Um, and uh, I will have my own copy and not just a picture up here. And now you might say, well, this is so far only five books. What are you talking about a lot of books? Well, I have a whole stack here. Let's see whether I can manage to hold this up. Yes because I bought all six books shortlisted for the Women's Prize. Because if you follow me, you know I will read or reread all of them and then make individual reviews for all six of them. And I will put these reviews up before the winner is announced uh, because I want, also want to make a prediction or a wish, you know, wishful thinking kind of video, which book I would uh, choose as a winner uh, before the 7th of July when the winner is announced. So we have uh, Patricia Lockwood. Uh, no one is talking about this. Uh, a book about a woman being famous for a, a, a tweet and then tragedy hits the family. I'm just going to really briefly mention um, the, the contents of the book because, you know, I don't want to talk too long about it. Um, the next one, uh, and by, by the way, um, this is a, a writer from the US. The next one is a, a British writer, Susanna Clark, uh, Pira Nacy, uh, also shortlisted. And this is kind of a fantasy world uh, where you have Pira Nacy, your main character, living in a house. Um, and it's a weird house. It's huge. And there's also an ocean. And there's somebody else maybe living there. We'll see. I will be buddy reading this one in June uh, with Adam uh, from Memento Mori and Kathleen from Kathleen Ann. I'm really looking forward to this. Probably will be the last book I read from the uh, shortlist because it's we scheduled the buddy read to begin uh, on the 12th or 13th, 12th, I think, 12th of June. Uh, the next one um, is also a British author, uh, Claire Fuller, Unsettled Ground, uh, about two siblings, um, 51, who live in a dilapidated cottage together with their mother, Dot. Um, and uh, the book opens when Dot, in her 70s, suddenly dies. And then the two twins have to fend on their own and for themselves. And there's also a family a secret that uh, needs to be uncovered. And I really, really enjoyed Claire Fuller's earlier books. Um, uh, so I'm, um, yeah, I'm excited for, for this one. And I'm excited that she has a book shortlisted for the Women's Prize. Uh, next up is a U.S. author from Ghana, now living in the U.S. And that is, of course, Yag Yazi, Transcendent Kingdom, uh, which is about... Um, um, the main protagonist, uh, a neuroscientist exploring um, uh, the neurological pathways that lead to, uh, you know, addiction. Um, uh, we get the family history, the brother who, that's not a spoiler, 
at least it says on the blurb, uh, the brother has died from a uh, heroin addiction many years previously. And now the mother um, is also ill, suffering from depression. And then, you know, this whole family history and saga uh, will be told from the perspective, if I understood correctly, of this uh, young woman, uh, a neuroscientist. And the next one is a debut novel, the only debut novel on the long uh, on the shortlist. There were more debuts on the long list, but this one is the only uh, one on uh, the shortlist. And it's a Caribbean, Caribbean, not Caribbean, Caribbean author, uh, Jerry Jones, uh, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House. Uh, set in the Caribbean, um, I will just read you uh, in Baxter's speech, Barbados, Lala's grandmother, Wilma, tells her a cautionary tale about what happens to girls who disobey their mothers. For Wilma, it's the story of a willful adventure who ignores the warnings of those around her and suffers as a result. I read you the blurb because I know very little about this um, a book, but that should be enough to maybe get you interested. And the last one um, is another American author, and that is, of course, Britt Bennett uh, with The Vanishing Half. She made a splash with her debut, The Mothers, and this one is about passing, uh, which means uh, it's about twin sisters, uh, black twin sisters, but they their skin is so light that they can pass as white. And one of the twins does that. She starts a life as a white woman, marries a white man, and the other one uh, uh, lives a black life, quote unquote, marrying a very dark skinned black man. Um, and they lose touch, they, you know, leave their, their, lead their different lives. But of course, at some point, it all comes together again, and we will see what happens then. So those are the six, and together with the earlier five, it's 11 books. And I think that's quite enough for a month. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the book haul. Uh, talk to me in the comments if, if you want to share books that you bought in May that you are excited about to read, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.